Greetings to another video. Today we are going to help you hit your goal target event this year and that is by avoiding the five mistakes that most people, myself included, have made in the run-up and building up to an event. So me, myself, I've ridden so many different events and trained for them. So I've done the jog, Dirty Reva, I've done Mallorca 312, I've done All Points North, which is a thousand kilometer self-supported ultra race. And so I have put the time into training and I want you to be able to achieve your training goal or your cycling event for this year, whether that's 50K, 100 miles, whether it's an ultra distance race, like I, I'm going to share the things that I have found out the hard way. And also I've roped in Philbert, who is a bike fit physio, just incredible brain of knowledge to be able to talk about, I guess, bike fit and preventing injuries. And then also my coach, Mark Holloway, who owns Revolution Cycle Coaching, who has helped get me through so many of these big, tough events. Number one mistake is not having a plan. So many people that I know just kind of sign up to these big events and just kind of like do a couple of rides here and there. If you are really serious about getting your goal or doing your ride, you need to have a plan. One, physically, so that your body is able to build up slowly and gradually to do that, preventing injury. And secondly, and I think this is the most important, mentally. By doing these rides leading up to it, you are mentally showing yourself that, oh my gosh, I can do this. Okay, maybe I did that ride. Maybe I can do this one. So I think it's so important to have a plan. And there are three different ways you can do it. And they're going to range from having to spend money um, and then having to spend nothing at all. So the three different ways that I would go at looking at a plan. Number one is the coach route. So getting someone like Mark to, you know, create a training plan for you. You tell him your event. He will give you program workouts of how to actually do that. I think that takes all the guesswork out of it. So having a coach and someone to speak to and figure figuring that out is so invaluable. So the second way is, and this is unbelievably clever. So it's a, a widget on the Garmin Connect app, or you can do it on the website. So you put your event into that website and you put it into the calendar and then it will work back a training plan specifically for you to suit that workout. So you'll need a heart rate monitor and the power meter to be able for this to work. So it's just an incredible way of being able to get daily structured workouts that's looking back at the, the workouts that you've done and adapting that to fit you and your needs based on your workload and the way that your body's reacting. So it's almost like having a coach without having a coach. You do have to have the Garmin Edge, I think it's the 540, 840 or 1040 for this to work. But if you've got like the heart rate monitor and the power meter, it is an incredible resource and it's free. So go and have a look at that. And the third way is if you're like Katie, I don't have a power meter, I don't have a heart rate monitor, I don't really like that side of it. How can I still get fitter? Mark has got the perfect solution for you. So I'll just insert that clip now for something like uh, the 312 for example which is a, a really really long ride in Mallorca it's going to take you several hours you want to be able to ride your bike for a long period of time so you're going to want to be sat in zone two on your training rides an awful lot and if you don't have any technical devices measuring what zone two is it, perceived effort wise it's a conversational pace type ride so if you imagine that you had someone next to you and you were chatting away, you'd probably get a little bit out of breath towards the end of your sentence, but it should be an easy ride. And you get a huge amount of benefits riding in zone two for progressively longer periods of time. So that would be my ultimate tip for potentially a longer distance event and, and shorter distance events as well. You want to, you want, in technical terms, you want to push out the uh, limit of your aerobic exhaustion. So uh, um, the only real way to do that is is by riding your bike in zone two for longer and longer periods. You can kind of cheat the system a little bit with some targeted intervals uh, at tempo, for example. Um, but if you haven't got any of those measuring devices, heart rate monitor or power meter, then by just riding your bike in progressively longer periods in zone two, you'll get a similar level of, uh, of adaptation and you'll push that uh, aerobic exhaustion further back into the ride. The second most common mistake that people make is not being consistent. Consistency is the most important thing that you can be and that is dependent on how many hours per week you've got to train and it also means being very specific on the amount of hours because there's no point and I get it you get really excited before you you know you sign up for an event and I'm like, I'm gonna train like 15 hours a week for this. I wanna be so fit by the end of it. 
And then you get two weeks in and then you're like, ah, oh, I actually haven't got time to do this amount of training because of family commitments, work commitments. And so then it just completely drops off. But if you had been more conservative and been like, do you know what, I could probably do four hours a week. And you can keep that consistent for say, 10 weeks, that is gonna get you so much better results than just doing bursts of like loads of training. Also to be consistent, I would recommend getting a turbo trainer if you are serious about your event because turbo trainers and training indoors takes all the other elements that you've got out. So you've got, you've not got the weather in the equation. Also time limits as well. So it's so important for me for time. I'm actually gonna get on the turbo today because I don't have time to go out and do my ride because the session that I'm doing today is probably like an hour and 10 minutes indoors but for me to go outside and do it, probably gonna take me like just over two hours. And that is because I need to ride somewhere to find a hill to be able to do my intervals on without having, you know, roundabouts to contend with or busy roads or traffic. And the turbo that I use is the um, Garmin Tax Neo 3M. This is the comfiest vest turbo I've ever used. It is phenomenal because it's got movement forwards and backwards and side to side. And when I've been on really rigid turbo trainers in the past, they, I just get a little bit of soreness after about an hour just because there is no movement. So movement is good on a turbo and honestly the 3M is phenomenal. I would also recommend the Tax Neo 2T which is the predecessor for the 3M. The M stands for movement. The 2T still moves side to side and you can actually buy rocker plates that you go underneath that. But that is also a, a brilliant turbo trainer if you want one that's a little bit more affordable but it's still got all the good benefits of being able to move. The third one is not actually training for the event that you've got in mind. I see people on Strava and I know that they've got this specific event in mind and their training is all over the place. They're doing random sessions here, there. There's no point for me, example, doing sprint efforts and sprint intervals if I'm aiming to do a 500K or 400K ride. So for me, one of my goals, and you'll see it coming up very soon, um, I've got a multi-day back-to-back event that I'm very excited about, also very nervous about. So I'm gonna be then doing some back-to-back -back days so that my body knows what it feels like to do a big day and then ride for a second day. And while I do a lot of my training on the turbo, I make sure that obviously I'm doing a lot of my training outdoors as well because obviously for endurance events, I need to know what it's like and get used to sitting in the saddle for like 10, 12, 15 hours. Power, I use the Garmin Rally pedals. So they are the RS200s, which is the road version, and then the XC200s, which is the off-road version. And if you are someone that has got um, a road and a gravel event, you can actually change the housing. So you can just buy one set and then you buy like a housing kit. And so you basically effectively have a road and an off-road pedal just if you, just on one, one spindle. I will leave a link to those below if you are interested. Also, another big question that I get asked all the time from you is, what distance should you do, say if your goal is 100 miles? And Mark, is the best person to answer this question, so I'll insert that now. But let's say you're trying to break your first 100 miler or, or something like that. You you want to build up your longer training rides to two thirds to three quarters distance in the lead up to that event. So, you know, between 60 and 75 miles on your longer endurance rides, that, that would be absolutely fine. The fourth thing is, and I'm very guilty of this, is not planning for things to go wrong. Like if we have a training plan and we've, we're training for the event that we want and it's all running smoothly, that's amazing. And we'd all be super, you know, our highest fitness levels if that was the case. But we have other things that come into play like work. We have extra commitments at work, for example. We get ill or we get injured or we, ride through, this is, I'm talking about myself, you ride through a session that you're like, no, I really wanna do this session, this is in my training plan, and it was an injury. I had an injury and I just was like, it'll be fine. And that pushing through that made me not do my event. I trained for months to do this event. It was all points north. I had a bit of a sore Achilles, a little bit of a niggle, that niggle turned more painful, about 60K from the end. And I was like, oh, it's more faff for me to go and find a train station. I'll just ride it back. I'll just ride through the pain. That was a big mistake. And you should never, ever, ever do that because that meant I couldn't ride the event that year. I was gutted. I was so disappointed. So do not ride past pain like that. And Phil, physio, bike fit, has got some really good advice on that now. So I'll insert that here people encounter illness or injury or something else, maybe work, and they have a training plan. And the training plan is like this, maybe like 12 weeks long, and the event is here. And the event doesn't move, right? This is the same, I've been through this many times with you know, free Olympics and Tour de France every year, you know, that, that doesn't move. 
but this doesn't always run. So what you should do is plan for it not to go to plan, right? And in other words, be comfortable with it not going right. And what I mean by that is don't try and play catch up. So if you have two weeks off the bike and the plan isn't here and you've lost fitness, don't try and squeeze in all that training beforehand because the one and only thing we are certain of in the world of sports medicine science is how load spikes, massive quick changes in loading, and that can be any form of training off the bike and on the bike, they're very closely correlated when people break down and injure, you know? People will really often spend money and move the dial once they're in pain and discomfort. What I would say is if you can be prophylactic, in other words, get that done before you end up with the injury, nothing worse than trying to reverse back out a cold sack of being injured, you know? If you can invest in the future and, 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 and basically work out, hold on a minute, I'm gonna do this event. You know, you know, if it's a really a lot longer than you've ever ridden before, we're gonna find out the things you didn't know riding small distance. So the longer you go, the harder you go, that's when the little things become big things and you don't want them to become big things. So that's when you might need to invest, you're absolutely right, some expert advice where they can say, look, that's not optimal for you. If we change this, this would become better, you know? Yeah. So that's the risk, you know? I'm all for people doing these longer, harder things and some people are doing some crazy things. But, you know, it's understanding what are good and bad pains, you know? There can be that where you can go, yeah, if you ride for, 312 kilometers it's normal to have a little bit of back pain but not back pain that means you can't finish the race yeah we all get a bit of a sore back when we finish a long ride we might have slightly numb hands you take your hand off shake it, it goes away that's fine finishing with completely numb hands that stay numb for the next two weeks that's not good <laughs> and then the fifth and final one is if you've done all the other four things right you've got your training plan you're training for your event you're mentally and physically ready this is probably the most important one and i will let phil explain. I will be honest, I've never done this because Phil has always told me time after time after time, never, ever, ever do this. It's introducing new stuff, new equipment or new training or new too late in the day. So the classic one, you know, someone gets ready for a marathon and they say the new trainers for the marathon, put them on and get horrendous blisters, maybe not even finish or get injured. Same's true of cycling, you know. Um, you don't want to be changing your cleats, your insoles, your shoes, for example, or introducing a bike fit change that you haven't had at least, in my rule book, at least two weeks to absorb if it can be longer. Because then if you have a problem with it, you're going to know you can adapt and adjust it. And you wouldn't believe how many people have that. It must be something to do with human psychology. I'll save this new thing for, for best and last, unless you're absolutely sure about it. That, 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 that where you've done it a hundred times before and it won't have any ill effect on you, then don't do that. Bed things in before you go to the event. And you can have that confidence on the start line that everything that you've done is there. So I hope that has helped answer your questions and give you a bit of encouragement and inspiration to be able to go after the event that you want to this year. And if you've not picked one yet, choose one because I never thought I'd be able to do some of the things that I've done, but with a bit of dedication, a bit of time, you can do anything that you want on the bike. It's just, putting the time in, building your fitness to be able to get to that level. And I promise you, you can do it, I promise. Any other questions, leave them in the comments. I am aware that I've not mentioned anything about nutrition in this video, that's gonna be a whole separate video. If you've got any questions about that, leave it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next video. Goodbye!